one of the saddest events in, current, in the current years that have gone by in South Africa has been Professor Cyril Karabas in, in the United Arab Emirates. And Michael Bagram, I know that you are an attorney, but I think more of a humanitarian in this situation. And you've been helping the Karabas family in obtaining his release. What's the situation as you see it now? Well, the problem that we've got now is that Professor Karabas has cleared his name in every single corridor of power that you've got in the United Arab Emirates. The Abu Dhabi courts have sat, they found him not guilty. The medical committees have found him not guilty. The appeal court has found him not guilty. We've been through the mill. Every single process that is expected to have taken place has taken place. He's now in a situation where he's not guilty. They said he's free to travel, he can come home. What do, what do we want? We want his passport back. And the problem that I've got is that the passport is stuck in the administrative system. And that because it's stuck in that administrative system, we can't get him out. It's no good. Uh, people have been telling us, why don't we put him on a temporary passport? The South African government has offered to issue a temporary passport. It's not going to help us because as soon as he gets to the airport, he's going to go through the system over there. The computers are going to pick him up as a fugitive of justice where it was registered already and we're going to have trouble all over again. So I can't afford it. He's old. He's sickly. He's a man that can't afford to have a fright or to have another down again. And unfortunately, we've just got to sit and wait. I've got him in an apartment there. Um, it's costing us a fortune in Abu Dhabi just to live. But there's nothing else I can do. He spent about one and a half million rand so far on legal costs. But I've told him he's got to sit there and wait. And as we're currently speaking now, We've filled in all the forms, we've done all the requisitions, we've done everything that's necessary. He's ready to come home, he wants to come to Cape Town, and I told him he's just got to sit and wait. What has this old man, this professor, a medical person who went to a foreign country to assist in life-saving operations, mm. has he done to annoy these people so much? Well, nothing really, but unfortunately, one of his patients died. This is an event that took place in 2002. He got arrested in August 2012, not knowing that he had been found guilty in absentia. Very upset with the hospital we are, specifically because they could have told us, first of all, that this is taking place. Professor Karabas is saying, if I knew that they were going to have a trial, I would have been there for that trial. This is a very strange man as well because I personally don't think I would have pitched up. I would have said, look, that's your system. Have your trial. Leave me out of it. I'm never coming there again. But he's the sort of man that said, I would be there. I want to be there. I want to defend myself. No one told him. They know what his phone number is. It hasn't changed. His address hasn't changed. His email address hasn't changed. Everything's the same. The hospital knows exactly where he is. No one informs him. 2012, in August, he goes off to his son's wedding in Canada. On the way back, and he went through Dubai on the way there, in transit, went through Dubai. No one says a word. On the way back, he has a seven-hour stopover. He then decides that he's going to go into the city of Dubai and book into a hotel to relax. Being there at the time, he then goes through customs. The minute he goes through customs, the computer picks up that he's been found guilty in 2003. That's nine years later, from an event that took, years, took ten years ago. He's then arrested, there and then. The family asks what for. The police don't know. The computer merely says fugitive from justice. doesn't tell you what he's done, what he hasn't done. I get the phone call that next morning to say that he's there and he's under arrest. It happens to be in the middle of Eid. There's nothing I could do. I couldn't phone the police. I couldn't phone the administration. No one, nothing works during Eid at all. The only person I was able to get was our embassy. Our embassy then started working on it and eventually found him two days later in a jail in Abu Dhabi, not in Dubai. He had been transferred and only on the fourth day then did I find out that it was the alleged manslaughter of this young Yemeni girl of three years old. Who died of leukemia? She died of leukemia. She had a lot of other complications. She, she, her body was riddled with cancer. The, the poor young thing was 
really unfortunately in pain. He gave her a blood transfusion to try and help with the pain. They gave her medication to help with the pain. Um, her entire body was racked with cancer. She eventually died of an embolism. Her brain died. And eventually, the neurologist that was on duty took her off medication because he said she's brain dead. Now, unfortunately, their system says that you only die when your heart stops, not when your brain stops. Uh, very different to our system in South Africa. Uh, um, it's, a, it's an issue that both the Jewish religion and the Islamic religion, the um, person doesn't die if their heart still pumps. He wasn't that doctor on duty at the time. We haven't mentioned that up until last week because we didn't want to get another doctor in, uh, into trouble. I but was, he wasn't on duty. I saw that and I thought, well, where no. was your defense that it wasn't him that did that? And then all of a sudden it popped up and I thought, why the delay? Well, we didn't want to get another doctor into trouble. Yes, I hear that, but really one has to tell the truth. Surely. Well, we did tell the truth. We did. But no weren't one you asked... holding back the truth by not doing that? No, 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 one, no one, only the thing they accused us of doing was not giving the blood transfusion. And he did give the blood transfusion and we could prove it. Ah. And the easiest way to prove it was to go and get the records from the hospital. You get the pharmacy records to show he drew the blood. You get the medical records to say that the blood count was one and the next morning it was 19,000. So clearly the patient got the blood transfusion, so that was our defense. Only on appeal did a prosecutor then come forward and say, but why was her medication stopped on the day that she died beforehand? Then Professor Carabas had to answer that by saying, I don't know, I wasn't the doctor on duty, I had already booked out, I was off duty at that stage, and there was a neurologist that had taken over and said she's brain dead. I don't know why he took off medication. Of course we do know, because she was dead. Her brain was dead. The hospital agreed with the doctor and withdrew life support. The neurologist said, the girl is dead. That's his teachings. Tell him that when your brain is dead, you die. He then withdrew the support. That's the hospital's fault as well. They then said, we want to keep ourselves out of trouble. They're making a lot of money there. It's a very, very fancy, lucrative business, that. It's run by a company in the United States. They said, we want no further trouble. We'll pay the blood money. It wasn't big money. It was a uh, quarter so, of a million rand. So now, now the Americans are, are now involved in there because this is a money-making exercise. Correct. And it's an oil country. Yeah. Let's all go around in this merry-go-round. Mm. Have the Americans been of any assistance to you under these circumstances? How about zip? We've written to the hospital. Absolutely zip. We've written to the hospital. They've refused to help us. It's, it's actually a very sad state of affairs. Well, I think this has never been mentioned before that the Americans are behind the financial side of this. Yeah. I think it's time that it was mentioned. I know we will. We want to get, we want to get yeah. Professor Carabas back first. But yes, I understand that. And you don't want to make too much fuss before yeah. he comes back, which leads me into the next part of my questioning, which is there have been rumours that Professor Carabas was told he could go. And then he went on to radio and television and newspapers and made what they say a ranting statement about how bad this mm -hmm. law was how bad emirates were yeah. and now they punished him again by keeping him there well, a bit that, longer that is the deep-seated suspicion that we hold we don't know but he did go and make a statement on one of the radio stations here in south africa um he he was basically at his wits end he he then said that he was extremely unhappy um, he unfortunately did make some bad statements <coughs> And we suspect at that point that the prosecution then decided to appeal. But it's merely suspicion, it's surmise, we don't know. What is good is that when that appeal was announced, they then could have waited, at, waited for months, absolutely months before they went and did it. But because of the cooperation between the defense and the prosecution, <coughs> that appeal took place within seven days. Then they said they're going to give us a judgment quickly in six days, which is also good. I mean, if you want a judgment in South Africa, you can wait five years for it. But they said they'll have a judgment within six days. In fact, working hard, the judge then came in the next day and said he's not guilty. I think it's also because the penny dropped when the judge suddenly realized that, hold on, he wasn't the doctor on duty. We might have the wrong guy here. Um, because that, that's when that judge suddenly realized that 
I mm. suspect that that neurologist is not in Abu Dhabi at the moment, so he's not in, he's not in further trouble. And as for the professor's claim that he will never fly Emirates Airlines again because they did not assist and they obviously tipped yeah. the authorities off, do, does that hold water? Well, I, th I think it is. I think, I think he's very angry with the Emirates. Mm. Um, I must obviously get to speak to him when he comes back. They could have known because they knew that there was a problem with the visa coming into, into Dubai itself. They knew there was a problem. They could have said to him, listen, we think it'd probably be more expedient for you to sit on the airport and go buy an ice cream and don't go into a hotel for a, a shower and shave. Um, rather stay here. They could have actually mentioned that they know. Airlines know when there's a visa problem. They're told, your passenger number 723 is, isn't persona non grata, and then they may have to ask why. So we have a scurrilous film script involving the Americans, the, uh, uh, the Arab yeah, world, the airline, an airline. A hospital group. We um, couldn't have written it any better, could we? Yeah, no, this, that sounds like a soap opera. The unfortunate thing is the, the bugger that's getting beaten on the head each time is Professor Caribus. And his family and, and financially? Yeah, he's, he's destroyed. He's absolutely destroyed. He doesn't have a penny left, nothing. He's living on handouts. Um, there's a wonderful doctor in Abu Dhabi that's basically keeping him in his apartment, um, who's an ex-South African uh, Pretoria uh, gastroenterologist. A uh, lovely guy who is basically keeping him there as a guest. Um, the medical profession here in South Africa are donating money to pay for his legal fees in Abu Dhabi. It's gone through the roof. Um, I'm sitting over here, I certainly haven't charged him any fees. He happens to also be a friend of mine. Um, but the bottom line is it's put an end to my business for the last six months. I've spent all my time writing to newspapers, to, uh, medical associations, TVs, at the works. I've got 17 leverage files of letters that I've written out here, obviously to give to him when he comes back. He's got a lot of people to thank. Let's end this interview in this particular area on, on this point. Is this not now the biggest warning to doctors from foreign countries pr that are thinking of practicing in the Arab world that it is fraught with danger? It not may yet. be wealthy and it may empower them in their pocket but it could disempower their lives completely. You are right of course it, it is a real issue. Um, I think the, the warning goes further than that. There has been a warning from the World Medical Association a cautionary notice saying don't go there talking about the United Arab Emirates driven by the South African Medical Association SAMA have driven this and the doctors have stood together on this and we probably have doctors from all around the world that are writing into this office here in Cape Town saying, should we go there? And we've been warning them, look, we don't think that's right. Rather don't. That being said, I think doctors going anywhere in the world need to be warned that they must understand the culture and the system that they're going into. Because we've just heard about a doctor this afternoon that was practicing in Paris from London. He went from London, went into Paris, practicing there and has just got himself into trouble because he followed a different protocol than what they would do in England. He followed it in Paris and he's not in trouble. And it's also criminal there. They have a different medical system, a different legal system, and he's in trouble. And his family have contacted us knowing full well we're doing this case, saying is there a way I can help him? I said I'm not looking for another case with the doctor in trouble. But this rings a bell. And the bell is Please find out where you're going, find out what you're getting yourself into, and do the proper necessities of it. Get proper insurance, medical insurance, legal insurance. Get insurance from your employer, the so-called employer, who will bail you out if he has to, has to get you lawyers if they have to, etc., etc. In Dr. Caribus's case, it's even worse. They didn't even, the employer didn't even bother to tell him that he was in trouble. So that's, that's the issue over here.